Now there is one thing that I see all good players doing. They all have this butt into the club pointing to the right of the target at this point in the downswing when the club's parallel to the ground. So that club head is inside the hands. And the reason for this is that from this point in the swing, our hands naturally want to work up and to the left around our bodies. So if I have this club not in that position, imagine it's on the other side, it's out here, then the only thing I can really do from that point is either pull my hands naturally to the left, and when I do that, I'm just gonna hit a big pull to the left, or what I see a lot of people doing that really, really struggle with consistency, they'll try to make a compensation from this point in the swing by pushing the hips forward. They push the hips forward, that gets the hands to push out, and that gets the club to be more on plane, but it also opens the face, and now I have to flip to get back to the ball. So if I do that, I'm not even sure if I'll be able to hit the ball from, the, from here, but I'll give it a try. You can see that wasn't the worst result. It didn't even pick it up. It was so bad. I, can't, I think I just kind of dropped, kick, chunked that. But I can tell you, it went pretty straight, but I just felt like I had no control of it. You know, I, I think I chunked it a little bit even as well. So it's just really, really difficult to, hit the, to be consistent, hit the ball solid when you do that. So now if you imagine, if you get here in the swing, get that club inside the hands, I get it inside my hands. Now I feel like I can just turn my hands up and to the left through impact, and I'm gonna have complete control of it. So that one there, dead straight, felt like I knew the face was gonna be square, I knew it was gonna be on plane, and I knew it was gonna be solid because of where I had that club position. So what do we need to do to get to that point? Well, there's three key things that we have to be doing at that point in the swing. One, we have to have some spine angle away from the target. If I'm leaning toward the target, that's gonna make me wanna push everything out this way, and that's gonna push that club outside the hands and lead to those, those inconsistent shots that we talked about. So we have to have some spine angle so that way I can be a little bit more from the inside and be able to get to where I wanna be. Number two, I have to have my trail arm underneath my lead arm. You may have heard of people talk about the window before. What they're talking about is, is my lead arm and my trail arm are creating this window in the downswing. If I go like that and I get that club working outside, you see you lose the window. You shouldn't see any space there between my arms. But if I get my trail arm underneath, I get a little bit of bend in my trail arm and get my trail arm underneath, that's gonna allow me to more easily get this club inside my hands. Lastly, what we have to do is we have to get our trail hand behind our lead hand. And we do that by extending our wrist back. So if you look here, if I push my wrist out this way, that's gonna get that club outside my hands. But if I extend my wrist back, that gets the club inside my hands. So let's do a couple pausing half swings here where we get that club inside the hands and swing through. So that way you kind of feel how easy it is to swing through. So we're gonna go up to the top. We're gonna to make sure we have some spine angle away from the target. We're gonna make sure our trail arm is underneath our lead arm. We're gonna make sure that our trail hand is extended back and behind our lead hand. And then from there, we just wanna do a couple pumps. One, two, three, and then swing through. Hit that one a little bit thin, but you can see the face is dead square and I'm on plane that's going dead straight. And we're not going for speed here. We're just going to get the feeling of how easy it is to get that club to naturally want to swing through. You just let the arms just naturally swing around your body and you're going to be in good shape. So I want you to get about 10, 20 reps of those pausing pumps, getting that club to be in good, good position. One quick tip here, if you're hitting off of real turf, it may be easier in the beginning just to tee the ball up, right? If you're hitting off of a mat, that's fine, but off of real turf, it might be a little bit easier to tee it up in the beginning. So once you get that, what I want you to do is let's try to do this more in a fluid swing, right? So nice and slow, and I want you to go really slow here in the beginning. We're not going for speed here. We're just trying to get the movement down, getting comfortable with the movement. If you go really fast, it takes away your feel. So you wanna go nice and slow in the beginning so that way you can feel what we're doing. You know, I have an eight iron here. My normal eight iron distance is, you know, around 165. I'm not trying to hit this 165. These are just half swings, as you can see there on that one it went 119, that's much below my normal eight iron. I don't care about how far I'm hitting it, I just care about getting in the right positions at first. So I'm just gonna take some practice swings here where I'm really focusing on getting that club you know, behind me, feeling those positions, getting that spine angle away, getting my trail arm under, getting my right hand behind, and now I can swing that club more easily, and I can just let it kind of swing around my body. So let's do another one here where it's just nice and slow and I'm just feeling those positions here. And again, I'm just going as slow as I need to to be able to get into those good positions. I'm just gonna take a half swing here, getting in those good positions. And that one I yanked a little bit to the left. I probably didn't get it quite enough behind me, 
but I was probably going a little bit too fast there, not feeling what I needed to do. So after that, I probably slow it down a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's slow it down a little bit and let's see if I can get it to be a little bit better, a little bit more behind and feel my hands working to the left as I'm coming through. So let's see if I can get a better one than, than the last one. So yeah, got a much better one. You can see there, dead straight, you know, a hair of a draw there. And you can see there, 130 yards, not my max distance with my eight iron. I'm just trying to work my way up. So if I was working on this myself, I'd work my way up to longer and longer swings. Now, as you get to longer and longer swings, full swings, there's some things that we need to be doing in the start of the downswing that are really, really important to be able to pull this off later in the swing. And you may have heard us talk about this before, but this is what we refer to as the anti-roll method. There are specific things that you need to be doing with your forearms and your wrists to be able to get this club in a position at the top to be able to get it in this position down here in the downswing. Like I said, this is what we refer to as the anti-roll method. So I have a great bonus video today where Clay Ballard, the founder of Top Speed Golf, is gonna go over that anti-roll method with you here in just a second. If you'd like to see a preview, just stick around. But if you'd like to see the whole video, just click the iCard that's gonna appear up on your screen up in the corner. If you don't see the iCard, no worries. Just go below the video in the description and click the link there. Play well, get your consistency back, and I'll talk to you soon. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,